H370 and B360 and also H310 motherboards are now upon us in the wild. And are they what you're looking for, especially if you're looking to get a non-overclockable CPU, whack it in, even use the stock cooler and extract more value? Because previously the Z370 motherboards were released and they were the only motherboards on the shelves for quite a while. And people who just wanted to get an 8700, for example, didn't need that Z license. And you may be wondering what are the differences between these and of course Z360 motherboards. Well, the biggest difference between this and of course the Z series is you can't overclock on these motherboards. And in fact, on all three motherboards, the max memory multiplier you can achieve is 2666. But here we've got a H370N Wi-Fi from Gigabyte, B360 Aorus Gaming 3, and also a H370M ITX from ASRock. And you're probably wondering, can these motherboards handle an 8700K at 4.3 gigahertz, which is essentially the same as an 8700 without throttling on the VRM? And the answer to that question is yes. So I've tested all these motherboards with the FLIR 1 Pro camera, and we can see that the Gigabyte got around 85 degrees, the H370N. This was after a sizable stress test of over 15 minutes in Ida 64 on all cores and all threads. And I was actually pleasantly surprised to see that this motherboard was doing so well. We've got a little bit of headroom there. On the VRM, they're using a four plus two phase power design with on semiconductors, 34 amps on the high side and 52 amps on the low side. This is at 80 degrees. So this is right where it's getting stressed at. Now the ambient temperatures were about 24 degrees when I was doing the testing and moving along with the B360 motherboard here, it's using the same VRM at least for the CPU, except it has a four plus three phase power design and you've got, again, four phases dedicated towards the CPU. So no surprise, when I did the VRM temperature test on this, it scored basically the same since they both have heat sinks and it was getting around 85 degrees as well on full load. Moving over to the H370M from ASRock, they're using a semi-child uh, for the MOSFETs. They're the dual end, so they packed it all into one box there with the MOSFETs. And you're getting a MOSFET that's rated at 25 amps. Now, when I tested the 8700K on this as well, the VRM temperatures did go just above 100 degrees. So I was a little bit worried about what I was seeing, but the actual MOSFETs themselves were okay. So all three of these boards, I was happy to report that there was no throttling when you were maxing out an 8700K. But of course, what about all the other bells and whistles on these three motherboards? Let's take a look. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with a look at these three motherboards that you see on the table. Now, I did previously take a look at the B360M, the Prime series from Asus. I'll put the link up here. That was okay. I mean, with an 8400, the VRM was getting a little bit hot, and I unfortunately couldn't even test my 8700K on that uh, actual motherboard. I've got to figure that out. I am going to go get another 8700K retail sample and go try that out on that motherboard to see if it works. But I was happy to say that my uh, engineering sample did work on all these and they were juicing over 100 watts in the CPU alone. So if the VRM can handle it on the 8700K, then it can handle it on any of the other SKUs on the 8th Gen Coffee Lake CPUs. Now the good thing is as well, the audio on all three of these motherboards is actually pretty good. I was surprised to see that Gigabyte have addressed and also ASRock as well, that crosstalk problem. When we look at the ASRock here, that's pretty much the same as it's always been with the ALC 1220, except this time around, there's that crosstalk. It's not leaking all the way up to 100. So crosstalk's really good. Frequency response curve is really good as well. Pretty much flat throughout the hallway. Of course, under 20 Hertz, you do get a little bit of a drop off with that base, but great for mid range cans. Of course, if you're going for higher end cans, you may wish to get a dedicated audio solution. The mic import itself, was pretty good. The noise is pretty much on par with all previous ASRock motherboards, so you can use it with a decent mic. And now moving over to the B360 motherboard here, the Gaming 3, they've also addressed that crosstalk problem. It's no longer existent all the way up to 100 volume. However, on this uh, motherboard uh, in particular, there was a 1.5 decibel difference between the left and right channel. I couldn't balance that out unless I manually uh, set the right channel at a bit of a less volume. So I managed to balance it out manually, but out of the box, it was a little bit off the left and right channel. Crosstalk, of course, was really good. However, when we moved into the frequency response curve, that was a little bit off as well at the higher frequencies. The bass roll off was very well controlled, like 2.5 decibels under 20 Hertz. Very nice, uh, will work pretty well with mid range cans and you do have more volume on this as opposed to the Z370 which I previously took a look at uh, just last month. 
And then moving over now to the H370N, here's where things get interesting with the onboard audio. Uh, because the mic input showed absolutely no noise all the way up to 100 with plus 30 dB. So I do believe they're using noise suppression. However, with the audio, it was extremely loud. I had to drop the volume down to 25 just to get an accurate reading on this motherboard with the uh, audio. And the frequency response curve did show some really solid numbers. The bass drop off was a little bit more than these other two boards, but that's probably because I lowered the volume that much that it may have affected that bass. So the volume is extremely loud on this motherboard. The mic in port is really good too. However, above a volume level of 95, there was that crosstalk leaking problem that is rearing its head again. So if you are using onboard audio with this and you do have mid range cans, you may wish to set the volume level to 95 or below. And also the mic input on the B360 is uh, pretty much the same as the H370 from ASRock. So pretty solid, keep the volume at either 50 with plus 20 dB or plus 30 dB, and you should be good to go with no noise. Now, the last thing with the audio, there is no coax optical out. So if you're like me and you use a Logitech Z906, none of these motherboards are gonna provide that. So I was a little bit disappointed to see that not being present on all three boards, but let's look at the feature set on each of these motherboards. H370 and Wi-Fi, of course, includes Wi-Fi, tested the speeds on the NICs as well on all three boards. They all checked out, all have consistent speeds across Wi-Fi and the signal strengths are really good. The ASRock includes the antennas. These two here include a, a separate module. However, the B360 gaming will need a plug-in device down in the middle of the board. So you do get that included with the motherboard itself. Now with the uh, USB ports, we've got five USB ports on the H370N, also got a Type-C as well, and you've got USB 3. Though when I did test the USB 3 speeds on some of the ports, they were only giving around USB 2 speeds, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. B360 Aorus Gaming was phenomenal, and same with the ASRock board. These both have eight USB ports, one of these being a Type-C, the ASRock not having a Type-C port. Uh, both the mini ITX boards surprisingly have dual NICs on board too. Now the last thing is uh, with Thunderbolt support, none of these support Thunderbolt uh, from the motherboard directly, though you can add in a card and connect it up to the onboard connectors if you wish to. The H370N and the uh, B360 from Gigabyte, they include RGB headers and so you can sync your RGB with your motherboard via the BIOS or the utility if you wish to. B360 has four slots on board here for up to 64 gigabytes of unbuffered memory. These two uh, mini ITX boards have up to 32 gigabytes support. There's also USB 3 headers on each of the three motherboards. And also if you're gonna be using outputs for onboard video, then the, both the mini ITX solutions have HDMI 2 out, HDMI 1.4 and DVI out. The B360 only has DVI and HDMI 1.4 out on board. And now the last thing to talk about with the feature set itself is the generous amount of fan headers included on all three motherboards. Mini ITX uh, boards here, they both have three PWM fan header outs. The B360 Gaming has five. So that is impressive to see. If you wanna use this in a full-fledged build, then you know you're gonna have a lot of fan header outs. The B360 also has two RGB outs, and it also has the ability to switch between five and 12 volt control. And now it's time to talk about the last difference between all these motherboards, the B360 versus the H370, the chipset license itself. The B360 has the Intel Optane RST uh, driver control on it. The H370 has the RST Premium, just like the Z370. And now with the Z370 and the H370, you can uh, essentially RAID 0 uh, NVMe drives. So even this little H370N here from Gigabyte you can get two NVMe PCIe drives and then RAID 0 them since it does actually have two uh, M.2 slots, one on the front and one at the rear of the board. Fantastic design. The H370 from ASRock only has one, so you won't be doing any RAID 0. And the B360, although it has two, since you've got that uh, license with only the RST and not the premium, you can't unfortunately RAID 0 the drives on this motherboard. So now we're gonna move on to conclusion time. And of course, the biggest thing when you're buying any product is going to be the price. The H370N on Amazon at the moment is 130 US. So pretty well priced for a mini ITX board that basically features everything that I'd want out of a mini ITX board. It's even got that option to RAID 0 those NVMe drives. The onboard audio is fantastic. It's also even got RGB control on board though. 
Not too sure how you'd get too much RGB bling on a Mini ITX build. Uh, in Australia, it's 215 AUD, so the Australian pricing is a little bit off. I'd like to see that fixed if possible. Move over to the B360 Gaming 3, 120 US or 180 Australian. So it's actually pretty well priced, at least better priced than the H370N. And of course, you do get actually the M.2 shield as well. I forgot to mention this. Have tested this before, does actually make a difference unlike other brands that are putting M.2 shields on their boards. This does drop the temperatures of your M.2 drive, does spread that heat out. So it is great if you're doing a lot of video editing or doing massive file transfers and you wanna make sure that your NVMe drive is gonna stay a bit cooler. So overall, pretty solid unit as well as the VRMs on both the Gigabyte solutions. Max was 85 degrees on the worst case scenario as well. Uh, the BIOS itself as well was very nice on these two solutions. Did have all the options that you would want and was very easy to configure out of the box, both on easy mode and advanced mode. Now lastly, we're moving on to the H370M here from ASRock, coming in at 115 US dollars, or if in Australia, 170 AUD. So the Australian pricing is better in comparison to the Gigabyte boards, and also it's coming in $15 cheaper than the Gigabyte ITX solution. The biggest difference is, is this has more USB ports on the back. You get eight standard USB ports. You don't have Type-C, a native connector on there, but the Gigabyte, you've only got four USB standard connectors and of course that extra Type-C. Uh, the VRM did get a little bit hot. I did read up to 105 degrees, but it still did not throttle at all. So it will handle an 8700 absolutely fine. But when you do put it in a mini ITX build, and if you don't have airflow on that mini ITX build, then it could be a little bit of a problem. So just keep that in mind. It was a little bit hotter than the Gigabyte solutions here, but ultimately it is coming in cheaper. And also if you wanna do what I did with the Inwin Chop and with that 100 watt power supply, 8400, this would be the best bet for you. So really when it comes down to it, they've all got their feature sets and they all are priced to where they should be. And yeah, they all check out guys. So if you enjoyed this review, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below, what do you think about the H370 and B360 motherboards? Also with a H310 motherboard, I do wanna take a look at one of those. So I'll see what I can do and maybe pair it with an 8100. Uh, though if the VRMs are any weaker than these, then I probably wouldn't pair them with uh, the 8700. The H310s are looking like they'll handle an 8400 absolutely fine, which is where that budget price to performance match up with the motherboard and the CPUs is definitely going to sit for the sweet spot uh, people who want to build those gaming rigs out there. Anyway guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye. <laughs> On semiconductors with the high side rated at should research that 34 amps. And you're getting, <clears throat> we'll, we'll cross that out till the end. Welcome back to Tech.